Today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the Diamond Select Toys Marvel Selects Brown Uniform Wolverine Special Collector's Edition figure. The figure is actually an older figure, but I did find this at my local comic book store because Diamond Select are re-releasing a lot of their older Marvel Select figures. Case in point, uh, hold up that thought as we look around to the side of the package. as a nice image there of brown costume Wolverine. My favorite costume, by the way, of Wolverine. But the reason why it is actually a re-release is if you look at the bottom of the packaging, it's dated 2016 Diamond Select Toys and Collectibles All Rights Reserved. Also for the re-releases, there was Marvel Girl and Anti-Venom. Uh, the Anti-Venom we've already had a look at. Haven't had a chance to pick up Marvel Girl, but again, because all these figures are being re-released, gives me a chance and other collectors a chance to go back and pick these up again. Your read-up says, with the fate of the world hanging in the balance, Wolverine must journey through his past and face demons he thought were long buried. Not even, the, not even his unbreakable adamantium claws can stop the forces gathered against the Kaijin uh, Wolverine as he risks everything for the woman he loves. Let there be no doubt he is the best there is at what he does. Which actually I think is the same slogan best there is at what he does. I think that's the same slogan as Chris Jericho from WWE. Hmm, not quite the original, uh, not the original slogan that I would originally believe to be the case. Down below, head over to www.diamondselecttoys.com. You want to check out more stuff from the folks over at Diamond Select. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, though, we're going to get a better look at the brown uniform Wolverine from the Marvel Select line. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so with the display stand, there's a little bit of assembly that's required. Uh, just a default look of what the stand looks like. Uh, what you'll want to do is there's a back panel here. And we can go ahead and snap that into place. Just line up, just basically line the little notches here, the little pegs sticking out the top here, into the slots provided at the back of the display stand. Line those up, plug those into place, then you've got something that looks like that. As for the included samurai kind of sparring dummy, there's a little hole on the underside here. You can take this post, feed it underneath just like that, and then there's a little peg right there that you can slide the dummy into that. And you've got that going on there. And then lastly, lastly, there is one other accessory. Oh, I think I actually might, hold on one second. No, there isn't actually an extra accessory. Looking at the sword, the sword was right in front of me. The sword slides right into the top here, and it somewhat sits into this sheath that's built into the base here. It's a little obscure, but uh, you know, a, a, an interesting, I would say an interesting looking display base. Uh, I do like the deco that they've given this, this little sparring, I don't know what you would call a little sparring dummy here. It uh, doesn't look like there's any arm articulation on him, no head articulation. I mean, basically, it's just a, a staction piece. But the coloring on it is quite nice and super detailed, too. There's the front of him. You can also spin to the back. There's the back of him as well. Yeah, not a bad-looking piece, as you could probably expect it to, because I simply slid it into the front here. The sword is removable. Although, Wolverine does not have the capabilities to hold it. His fists are sculpted shut. It's a tease. I mean, the sword is right there. The handle seems as a suitable, oops, as a suitable size that he could easily have held it, but he has no holes or no partially open hands or gripping hands to actually support it. So for that, we'll just slide it back into place. The display base also has a little peg here where you can take Wolverine and peg him into place. But really, a lot of this, there's so much going on on this base that fitting then Wolverine onto it, as I've just disrupted my backdrop here, fitting Wolverine on there, it ends up getting a little bizé, just a little on the bizé side. Let's go ahead and take Wolverine off. And we'll put him right over there. I just made a mess of my dips all this fabric. As soon as something grabs it, it just goes 
and it pulls the fabric. Let's just smooth that out, make that look all real nice and purdy again. Okay, so let's have a look at the Wolverine figure. It's a dated figure, so you have to kind of look at it with those sort of eyes. The eyes a little, a little bit more forgiving. Coloring is pretty good on him in the browns, and it's not quite an orange color, as it's more closer to almost like a tan or caramel color on the little side areas of his torso and in the legs. And normally that would be like a yellow or like an orange color. Uh, the face is good, although the face could be one of the more one of the more issued areas of the figure that I'm not as crazy about. Uh, when it comes to Wolverine's mask, his mask tends to sit more on a flat level. This face, however, has the mask very tight against the front portion of his face, and then it pinches everything back for the back of the mask. It's a jarring look that I'm not particularly fond of, but, you know, it's the face, at least the mouth portion, if we, like, just look at solely that, the face portion here is pretty good. That I wish that this was a little bit more, a little bit more angled rather than, oh, there's a good look right there. Rather than it being smushed into the side of his face and, and curved back, I wish that it was actually just more of a straight angle. Just a little more of a consistency where it transitioned a little bit easier from the face out. For one reason or another, Wolverine also looks like he's got silver eyes. I don't know why they didn't paint those simply in on white. They end up going the route of painting them silver. He's a more lankier looking Wolverine as well, and also a little bit shorter in stature. But uh, you know what? I do think the figure's pretty good, actually. The claws, as you probably could expect it, are more of a soft rubber. I don't have as much the worry to them. And they're less like rods, as they are more thinner, flatter pieces of plastic. It's a look that works decently enough, and at least I don't have to run, run the risk that it's so garishly uh, warped when you get it out of packaging. Uh, speaking of warped, though, uh, the hands are pre-posed. Let me actually correct myself on that. They aren't pre-posed in the sense that you can't rotate the hands, but the hands are posed in such a way that they're supposed to be curving inward, and anything above and beyond curving it inward, if you rotate the hand, it does start throwing the hand, uh, just the curvature of the arm to the wrists, it throws it completely off. So even though you have articulation here, it's not really articulation that is so successful when you start rotating the wrists. Now, uh, by the way, when it comes to his posability, uh, Wolverine's head is on a ball joint, so it rotates all the way around. His shoulders hinge out, which is nice. I mean, because this is an older figure, you would almost think that he has limited posability, almost to the vein of, uh, well, even like the, the Punisher that we've looked at in previous videos. But strangely enough, well, not strangely enough, but Wolverine still has a good, adequate amount of articulation. A nice hinge joint uh, where you can bend both the arms inward. He has a rotation on the glove, and he also has a rotation on the wrist. Because the wrists curve inward, as you, we've already addressed before, and because he has rotation in the gloves, I don't see a reason why he then needed to have articulation in these in the wrist portion. Because you can't get it in a natural flowing po pose anyways, above and beyond having it like this. You rotate it inward, or you rotate it out, it looks a little on the jarring side. So I would have felt only that a rotation on the glove would have been totally sufficient. Uh, he does have also a waist swivel, which is nice. And surprisingly enough, he has ball jointed legs, which is something I was really surprised to, to actually see on this figure. He has a hinge also on the knee, a rotation right where the top of, I love these glorious boots on Wolverine. The Wolverine, similar to his mask really, his boots, love those boots. And he also has a hinge in the foot. The figure does things well in the sense that at least he has full posability. He's not limited. The areas of little eh, eh, little kumsi kumsa areas. Uh, again, the face, wish that the face mask wasn't as curved back as it was. And some of the awkward uh, sculpt choices for the wrists. Other than that, it's a decent looking figure. 
and one of my personal favorite Wolverine costumes. So getting this guy back in the comic book store shelves, definitely wanted to pick this guy up. Today's toy spot, we are having a look at the Diamond Select. This was the Marvel Select brown costume, brown uniform Wolverine. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more toy spots. That's true. More toy spots are heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.